okay today we will discuss an important class of signals which is called as lta systems linear time invariant systems and we will see how to find the response of such a system to any input okay we will describe first in the discrete domain because it is more easy to analyze discrete time discrete time convolution okay convolution is basically defines the response of an lta system due to any input okay so if you take a system which is linear and time invariant it means it has both the properties it has the linearity property it has the time invariant property also the system is linear it means individual inputs a linear combination of different inputs that generates or it gives a output which is the combination of their individual outputs and secondly this is time invariant it means the output or the delayed output of the system is same as the output due to the delayed input okay so this system follows these two properties that means a1 x1 t plus a2 x2 t its output is nothing but a1 y1 t plus a2 y2 t which is called as superposition and the second since it is time invariant also it means y of t minus t naught is nothing but equal to transformation of x t minus t naught okay so the delayed output and the output due to delayed input they are same if, in, if it is continuous time it is t if it is discrete time it will be n simply t is replaced with n okay now how to find the response of such a system so you have an input sequence xn you apply th this to a system which we assume now that this is a linear time invariant system so how to compute the output of the system so this output is basically computed using convolution okay now for this what we do <laughs> we take the help of unit impulse signal again here delta n okay delta n signal has a property that if you multiply x of n with the delta n <coughs> you will get only the sample at n is equal to 0 it means it is basically nothing but is equal to x of 0 into delta n okay or you can say that if it is shifting if you use the shifting property x of n into delta n minus n naught it will be x of n naught into delta n minus n naught okay so you take any input signal xn what we do we first express this input as a combi combination of unit impulses only and how you do that suppose you have a signal xn like this at 0 its value is suppose maybe 3 at n is equal to 1 it is 2 at n is equal to 2 it is 4 it is 2 and so on whatever may be the values okay I can express this signal as a linear combination of different samples. Suppose I take only one sample at n is equal to 0, which has a sample value 3. Then I take another sample at n is equal to 1, which has a sample value of 2. Another sample at n is equal to 2, this sample value of 4, and so on. Okay. So this sample 3, which is the sample of the signal at 0, 
it can be written simply as x of 0 into delta n this can be written as x1 into delta n minus 1 and this can be written as x of 2 delta n minus 2 and so on because delta n is present only at n is equal to 0 and at n is equal to 0 it is 1 so you multiply with x0 you will get 3 only rest all samples will be zeros for this okay it will just sample one value and that is at n is equal to 0 similarly in this you are multiplying x1 with delta n minus 1 so delta n minus 1 is 1 and when n is equal to 1 so at n is equal to 1 delta n minus 1 is unity so multiplied with x of n you will get, fetch the next sample that is 2 at n is equal to 1 and similarly delta n minus 2 is a impulse signal at n is equal to 2 with the amplitude 1 if you multiply with x2 you will get this 4 okay so likewise any sample value of this xn can be denoted in terms of unit impulses so as a result i can write x of n as x0 into delta n plus x1 delta n minus 1 plus x2 delta n minus 2 and so on and if it is a signal in the left side it will be x of minus 1 into delta n plus 1 and so on okay so any signal which is discrete it can be expressed using this equation as a linear combination of weighted unit impulses okay now this is the input to this system okay so i have expressed first x of n as x of 0 into delta n plus x1 delta n minus 1 and so on so i can write in the form of a summation x of k delta n minus k k from minus 2 plus infinity okay this will simply generate this series so it will be when k is 0 x0 into delta n then x1 into delta n minus 1 and so on okay now this is the input to the system which is a lti system we have to find what is the output okay now since we assume that the system is linear first property it means if the input is itself a linear combination of different signals so the output is nothing but the linear combination of different outputs so yn in this case will be equal to the output of the system due to x0 delta n plus output due to x1 delta n minus 1 and so on so their individual outputs output of this plus output of this plus output of this they are added together to form the output of the system okay now for this we define one thing that is called as impulse response okay so impulse response means what is the output of the system when the input signal is a impulse signal so if xn if i give delta n as input the output of the system is called as impulse response okay we generally denote impulse response with h of n for discrete case and continuous it will be h of t it means if my input is if xn is your delta n your yn is nothing but hn okay so impulse response simply means 
what is the output of the system when the input is impulse signal you not impulse signal okay and we assume here that suppose for this system it has a impulse response h of n okay so you can characterize this system in terms of its impulse response now okay now this output will be now what is output due to x0 delta n x0 is a constant and since it is a linear system so it, al it also obeys a scaling property okay scaling property means the output due to a1 x1n is a1 y1n okay if x1n produces y1n then a1 x1n will simply produce a1 y1n this is also the part of the linearity property which is called as a scaling property it means output of this will be equal to x0 this constant will remain as it is multiplied with what is the response of delta n and for delta n we have response that is h of n okay then output due to this is x1 and what is the response due to delta n minus 1 now we here here we use the another property that is the time invariance if the system is time invariant it means if you in delay the input by some time the output is also delayed by the same time so if delta n generates output as hn what is the output due to delta n minus 1 it is nothing but h of n minus 1 next will be your x2 h of n minus 2 similarly so on and it will be x of minus 1 h of n plus 1 for negative samples okay so this is the output of the system and you can express this simply this series again in the form of equation like this where you have summation of x of k h of n minus k k from minus to plus infinity and this is y n okay this is called basically convolution okay so convolution is nothing but the response of a RTI system in terms of its infinite impulse response that is h of n so if you know the impulse response of any system which is LTI you can find the output of that system for any input using this convolution equation convolution sum we call it as for continuous it will be convolution integral okay so we have used in this case if the system was not time invariant if the system is time invariant then you cannot have this equation h of n minus k okay in that case if it is linear but it is not time invariant your output will be something like this it will be x of k into h k of n okay where h k n <clears throat> is the response of the system due to delta n minus k if it is not time invariant it means the delay in the input will generate different delay in the outputs okay so in that case you cannot replace h k n with h of n minus k but if it is time invariant system then only you can have this equation okay linear and time invariant both properties must be valid then the response of the system can be computed using a convolution summation okay now we will discuss how to compute this convolution using this equation so you have an equation now y of n is equal to summation of x of k h of n minus k this is nothing but the response of RTI system in terms of its impulse response that is hn which we have called as convolution so how to find this output now suppose if you find y0 the response 
or the output of the system at n is equal to 0 you will get simply x of k into h of minus k n is 0 summation over k okay if you find the response at n is equal to 1 you will get summation of x of k into h of 1 minus k or entire k if you find that y is equal to n is equal to minus 1 it will be summation of x of k h of minus 1 minus k k from minus to plus infinity okay now if you interpret these equations this 3 what is this you are multiplying h of k x of k with h of minus k and then you are adding all the samples together and h of minus k is nothing but the folding of h of k okay it means in order to find y0 what you have to do you have to take x of an as it is but you have to represent it in terms of k okay suppose i take one example you have two sequence x of n is equal to 1 2 3 and let the impulse response of the system be 2 4 okay this is the impulse response you have to find y n the output of the system okay so to find y0 what i do i first represent the signal in terms of k i write here xk and the second sequence is here h of k so xk is at 0 it is 1 then it is 2 then it is 3 and hk is at 0 its sample is 2 at 2 it is 4 sorry at 1 it is 4 rest it is 0 okay now to find this y0 you can also simply uh, find the series it will be x of 0 into h of 0 plus x of 1 into h of minus 1 and so on similarly plus x of minus 1 into h of 1 and so on okay so x0 and h0 they are multiplied so at x is equal to 0 it is 1 at h is equal to 0 it is 2 so 2 into 1 it is 2 okay then x1 it is 2 h of minus 1 so h at minus 1 is 0 it means everything after this is 0 similarly when you have x of minus 1 and h of 1 x of minus 1 is 0 but h of 1 is 4 so 4 into 0 you will get again zeros it means you are getting only one non-zero value at n is equal to 0 that is x0 into h0 so this will be 2 okay otherwise you can also graphically what you can say that you have xk then you have plot it h of minus k now if you take h of minus k this is the folded version folding of h of k that is h of minus k and when you fold it it will become like this at 0 it is 2 and at minus 1 it is 4 and then you are multiplying these two signals together so when you multiply these two signals you are getting the output sequence which is x of k multiplied with h of minus k so if you multiply these two at 0 it is 2 at 0 it is 1 it is 2 so for n greater than 0 your h of minus k is 0 so for k sorry and for k less than 0 your x of k is 0 so as a result all other products will be 0 we are getting zeros in the product for other values of k and then you have to finally add all them together so when you add them together you just get one on zero that is 2 okay so to find y0 what you have to simply do you have to plot one signal as it is you have to fold another signal then you have to multiply them then you have to add all the samples together you will get y0 and similarly for y1 now what we are doing here is that 
you are multiplying x of k with h of 1 minus k so this involves folding and shifting now okay now h of 1 minus k since this is h of minus k it is already folded i have to generate h of 1 minus k so what will be that it means this h of minus k will be shifted by 1 now where it will be shifted to the left or right okay see i have already explained this when we have discussed these uh, transformations h of 1 minus k i can write it as h of uh, minus k plus 1 also okay and how you can achieve h of minus k plus 1 either what you do you have h of k as input if i first fold it okay it becomes h of minus k and then i shift it now this shift can be to the left or to the right if i shift it to the left or if i shift it to the suppose first right When you shift to the right, your k becomes k minus 1 or k minus 2, whatever is the shift. So it will become h of minus of k minus 1. This is first fold, then shift to the right. So it will become h of minus k plus 1. Okay. So if you are using all if you are already using the folded signal and you have to generate one minus k it means you have to shift it to the right by one it will become h of minus k plus one otherwise you can also achieve it like this you start from h of k and you first shift it if you first shift it then in that case you have to shift to the left by one then it will become h of k plus one okay k plus one means it is left shift and then you fold it it will become h of minus k plus 1 okay so either you can first left shift then fold it or you can first fold then right shift you will get h of 1 minus k now since we have already the folded signal here it is if you plot h of 1 minus k it means you have to shift it by 1 to the right so this signal is shifted by 1 to the right so what you will get your minus 1 sample will come at 0 that is 4 and at 0 it was 2 it will go to 1 that is it will become 2 okay again then you have to multiply them so you have plotted first h of 1 minus k then you have to multiply with x of k original signal this signal will be fixed this you have to first fold multiply add you will get y0 to get y1 you have to first fold it then shift by 1 to the right again multiply now when you multiply these two signals what will be the multiplied sequence you will get x of k into h of 1 minus k now product of these two this and this one so at 0 it is 4 at 0 it is 1 so 4 into 1 it will become 4 at 0 then at 1 it is 2 at 1 it is 2 so 2 into 2 it will become 4 rest it will be 0 because there are no overlapping samples and then you have to add all these samples together so it is 4 plus 4 you will get 8 so y1 is your 8 okay similarly when it is y of minus 1 so what you have to do in that case you have to get h of minus 1 minus k it means this signal h of minus k will be shifted by 1 to the left then multiply with xk and then add all the samples together you will get y of minus 1 okay so these are basically every time you compute the output of this using the convolution you have to use these four operations so you have y n is equal to summation of x of k h of n minus k okay so what is the procedure to find this equation output of convolution is to first shift one signal sorry first fold
then you have to shift then you have to multiply the two and then you have to add them okay fold shift multiply add using this and this has to be done for every sample output sample of course for n is equal to zero you have to only fold and multiply and add there is no shifting but for n is equal to one n is equal to two n is equal to minus one you have to fold one signal shift it then multiply with the second add them together you will get the output okay so if you are finding suppose y of two what you will do xk you will keep fixed okay hk you have to first fold it then you have to shift by two to the right the third is you have to multiply then xk with h of two minus k and then you have to add all the samples of this product you will get y2 if it is y of minus 2 in that case you have to shift by 2 to the left then multiply and then add okay so folding shifting multiplication and adding these are the four operations which are used in the convolution submission okay so i will take one more example so what is the convolution of suppose uh, xn is equal to 1 2 4 6 and delta n minus 1 plus delta n plus 1 what will be the convolution of these two signals okay or if it is simply what is the convolution of x of n and delta n what will be the convolution of fraction and delta n it will be nothing but xn okay the convolution of any signal with the unit impulse will give the same signal and this simply follows from the property of or the definition of convolution itself if you have the convolution of two signals it means one signal is in input one signal is the impulse response so if i am finding the convolution of xn with delta n so i can say my input is delta n and impulse response of the system is xn so what is the output so when the input is impulse the output is nothing but the impulse response which is equal to x of n so y n simply becomes xn okay and if you find the convolution of x of n with delta n minus 1 what will be the output it will be nothing but x of n minus 1 using the time inverse property because delta n generates the output which is xn so delta n minus 1 will generate the output which is x of n minus 1 so if you find the convolution of these two signals what will be your output it is nothing but x of n minus 1 plus x of n plus 1 this impulse these two impulses will simply shift the impulse response of the system by 1 unit to the left and the right and then you have to add them together okay so if you plot xn my xn is this is 1 at n is equal to 1 it is 2 then it is at 3 it is 4 then at n is equal to 3 it is 6 this is x of n so output is x of n minus 1 plus x of n plus 1 so if it is x of n minus 1 delay by 1 to the right it will become at this point at n is equal to 1 then 2 4 and 6 this is x of n minus 1 and if you plot x of n plus 1 this is shifted by 1 to the left so at minus 1 it will become 1 then 2 then 4 then 6 okay and when you add these two together you will get the output 
y of n okay so y of n will be at minus 1 it will be 1 because at minus 1 this is 0 at 0 it is 2 it is at 0 this is 0 so at 0 your output will be 2 at 1 it is 4 it is 1 so 1 plus 4 it will become 5 similarly at 2 it is 6 it is 4 6 plus 4 you will get 10 the net n is equal to 3 sorry minus 1 it is 0 it is 1 at minus 1 it is 1 at 0 this is minus 1 0 1 2 3 this is 0 1 2 3 and 4 okay so it is 1 at minus 1 at 0 it is 2 it is 0 so 2 plus 0 0 then at 1 4 plus 1 5 then at 2 it is 6 plus 2 it is 8 sorry at 2 it is 8 at 3 so minus 1 now 0 1 2 3 so at 3 it is 0 and at 3 it is 4 so it will become 4 at 3 and at 4 it is 6 this will be my output signal okay otherwise you can also do it like we have done in the previous case what you can do is that you can take it as x of k and this says that one signal as xk one signal as hk now delta n minus 1 and delta n plus 1 if you plot it it is nothing but you have two impulses one at n is equal to 1 one at n is equal to minus 1 or in terms of k i can take it as suppose hk so at n is equal to k is equal to 1 it is 1 at k is equal to minus 1 it is 1 and at 0 it is 0 one sequence the second sequence is your x of k so at 0 it is 1 then 2 4 then 6 okay then you can fold it multiply with this add you will get y0 fold shift by 1 to the left or right you will get y1 or y minus 1 suppose if you fold it I will get h of minus k and in this case it is a symmetric function your folded signal is sam okay and then I multiply these two and add them together so when you multiply it at minus 1 it is 1 at minus 1 it is 0 so 1 into 0 0 at 0 it is 0 at 0 it is 1 so it is again 0 at 1 it is 1 at 1 it is 2 so 2 into 1 2 you'll get in this product you will getting just one non-zero value that is 2 so at 0 it will become your 2 okay then you shift it by 1 to the right it will become h of 1 minus k so now at that time what will happen at 0 it will become 1 at 1 it is 0 and at 2 it is again 1 again if you multiply these two sequences xk into h of 1 minus k if you product it you will get y of 1 multiply and add so at 0 it is 1 at 0 it is 1 so 1 into 1 1 plus at 1 it is 0 at 1 it is 2 then it is 0 then at 2 it is 1 at 2 it is 4 so 4 into 1 4 you will get 5 the next sample and similarly the next sample and next when you calculate y of minus 1 you have to shift this signal to the left by 1 h of minus 1 minus k then again multiply and add you will get the output okay this is how you can find the convolution of the two signals okay so you can see that one more important thing is that x of n has how many samples four samples and this signal which is h of n i have taken it has three samples one is at minus one then one and then zero okay this has three samples 
and in the output y n how many samples you have one two three four five six so the length of y n which is the convolution it is nothing but basically m plus n minus y where m is the length of x n n is the length of h n the length of the convolution will be m plus n minus y. okay it means if one signal has four samples another has two samples how many samples will be in the output it is 4 plus 2 minus 1 so it is 6 minus 1 that is 5 samples okay and another thing that you can also conclude is that you can find the upper and the lower limit of the non-zero samples in the output your input starts from 0 this is at n is equal to 0 then at n is equal to 1 this is at n is equal to 2 and this is at n is equal to 3 and your h of k it starts from minus 1 to 1 minus 1 then 0 then 1 this is the range so when you find the range of the output signal you have to simply add their lower limits and upper limits so it is 0 this is minus 1 so 0 plus minus 1 minus 1 it means output will start from minus 1 this is 1 this is what here minus 1 and it will go up to the sum of your upper limit so it is goes to 3 it is 1 so 3 plus 1 4 okay so this is how you can find the upper and the lower bound of the output sequence by just looking at the input signal and the impulse response okay so you have a question for this or uh, before this there is another alternate way to find the convolution suppose when you go for any competitive exam if i take two sequences x of n is equal to 1 2 4 6 and h of n is equal to <coughs> 1 3 1 you have to find the find the convolution of these two signals this is a question for you for this lecture i will give you the answer but you have to do it in detail in uh, using graphically you have to first represent this as xk then this is as hk then you have to fold it then you have to multiply and you will get y0 then fold it shift multiply and you will get y1 y minus 1 y2 and so on that you have to do okay and what will be the answer for this that I will give to you? You you can check with this with this. You have to first write x of n that is 1, 2, 4, 6 in this row, and in this column wise, you have to write h of n this next three samples 1, 3, 1. And you have to multiply this with this. Multiply this, all the samples with individual samples of h, so it is 1. 1 into 2 will get 2, then 4, then 6, then 3 is multiplied with all the samples of x, so it will become 3, 3 into 2, 6, 12, then 18, then again with 1, so 1, 2, 4, and 6, and then you have to add them diagonally, you will get yn as the output, so it will be 1, 3 plus 2, 5, 6 plus 4 plus 1, 11, 12 plus 6 plus 2, become 20, then 18 plus 4, 32, and then finally 6. <coughs> okay. And you can also take this one more change. You can take this, you can take this as n is equal to 0 here. This arrow means that it is this sample is at n is equal to 0. So it will be at n is equal to minus 1. This is at n is equal to plus 1. Now what will be the limits for output? See this signal has 4 samples. This has 3. So output has how many samples? 6. 3 plus 4 minus 1. Now what will be the VN will be n is equal to 0 in the output. So the lower limit for this is 0. It starts from n is equal to 0. 1, 2, then 3. This is n is equal to 3. And this starts from n is equal to minus 1. 
and it ends at n is equal to 1. It means your output will go from 0 plus minus 1. This will go from minus 1 to 3 plus 1, 4. This is at n is equal to 4. This is at n is equal to minus 1. So 0 will be here. So minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3 and then 4. Okay. So you have to find the convolution of these two signals using the graphical method that I explained. And you have to check that the result of your answer should match with this. Okay.